equation. So in example 34, we had a look at how to find the second derivative of a parametric function. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch it, because I'm not going to uh, explain too much about it in this one. What we want to do is apply the second derivative, because we know that one of the ways in which we can use the second derivative of a function is to investigate the nature of a particular curve. And we're going on the basis that if uh, the second derivative is uh, if we put in a particular uh, coordinate point, if it's greater, the sec if the value is greater than zero, you've got a minimum turning point, and if that value there is less than zero, you've got a maximum turning point. So that's the theory that we're going to use. We're going to find the second derivative. We're going to evaluate the second derivative for any points that we find, and we're going to determine its nature. First of all, we actually have to find turning points of the curve, and so we can come up with a little expression. Hope you've already got things like this. Uh, we need to s discover, for any stationary points, the derivative, we'll call it dy by dx, is equal to zero. That's our first goal. So that tells us that we have to find the first derivative, and then equate it to zero and find if anything comes out of that. So what is our function? We've got two parts to it. We've got a part in x and a part in y. x is given as just t. So dx by dt is just 1. And y is represented by the function t cubed minus 3t. So do I by dt is 3t squared minus 3. So that tells us that our, now we don't have any fractions in those. So do I by dx can be conveniently expressed in this form here. Do I by dt divided by dx by dt. Do I by dt is 3 t squared minus 3 over 1, which means that we can just leave it as 3t squared minus 3. So far, so good. Um, what we want to say then, we've already determined, that's why it's a good thing to write it down, because I was then wondering what do I do now. For the stationary points, we want to set this value equal to 0. So we can rewrite for stationary points, 3t squared minus 3 should equal 0. And we can solve that. You could um, factorize it, um, take a difference of 2 squares, or we could just go quickly in this way because it's, it's just a squared term and a numerical value. We then divide 3 by 3 to get t squared equals 1. t is therefore the square root of 1, which has 2 values, t is either going to be 1 or negative 1. So that gives us the fact that there are two stationary points on our function, uh, one when t is 1 and the other when t is negative 1. Let's just take a step at this point to try and find what those points are. Okay, so we'll take it when t equals 1. Well, we're going to use our original x and y values. We're told that x equals t and y equals, what was it up there? t cubed minus 3t. t cubed minus 3t. So when t equals 1, x is 1, and y equals 1 cubed minus 3, so y is negative 2. So we have a point of um, we have a stationary point at 1, negative 2. We don't know what kind of stationary point it is, but we have a stationary point at 1, negative 2. We have a second stationary point when t equals negative 1. x is therefore negative 1, and y is negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1. Just always be careful when you're substituting in negative values, particularly where powers 
are involved negative 1 to the power 3 is negative 1 negative 3 times negative 1 is plus 3 and so we have also a y coordinate here positive 2 so we have a stationary point now of negative 1 2 interesting little symmetry to all of that so two stationary points Goody. It doesn't ask us just to find the stationary points in the question. If we go back, it says find the turning points of the curve, which we've just done, and determine their nature. Okay. So we're going to use the second derivative to find the nature. Because we can. We were told, not told, we worked out that dy by dx is uh, 3t squared minus 3, 3t squared minus 3. So the second derivative, d2y by dx squared, is the derivative of 3t squared minus 3 with respect to t. We're going to differentiate that as we normally do, as long as we multiply by t dt by dx, because we're not really differentiating by x in the first instance. Um, so what does that give us? We differentiate, we get 6t multiplied by dt by dx. So we worked out that uh, right back at the top, that dx by dt was 1, and therefore dt by dx is also going to be 1 so we're just multiplying through by 1. And the second derivative is therefore 6t. What does that mean? It means that we can um, work out our nature at uh, our first point of our first stationary point when t is 1. Then the second derivative is just 6 lots of that, which is 6. That's positive. So we've got a minimum turning point at the point 1, negative 2. And when t is negative 1, our second derivative is going to be negative 6. That's negative, obviously. So we have a maximum turning point at negative one two so there we've got our turning points we've got our nature and we have over here our solution okay you can go and apply that second derivative to looking at the nature of stationary points <laughs>